Welcome. My name is Vicki Shane and I am your worship associate this morning and part of the team that is working to live stream this service to you wherever you may be. We are an inclusive congregation that welcomes you as you are, inclusive of all your identities, complexities, and situations. We welcome your whole self, even if it isn't fully assembled, because we recognize that we are all in a, wor a work in progress and that we are all in this together. The service is being posted on our YouTube and Facebook pages so that folks can watch it later. Feel free to share it with your friends. And beginning Sunday, December 12th, we will resume in-person services at the Fellowship. Services start at 11 a.m. and will also be streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. Please say our opening words with me. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humankind in fellowship. For these high purposes, do we unite in worship. At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame from within us. Now it's time for a story for all ages. If you ever said something like, oh, I hope today's gonna be pretty because I wanna play outside, or I hope I do well on my spelling test because I didn't study, or I hope you get to feeling better. Man, I just don't think there's any hope that that's gonna happen. So what is hope? I have a little book here that may help explain it. It's called Hope is an Open Heart, and it's written by Lauren Thompson. Hope sometimes feels far away, but hope is always there. Hope is the warmth of strong arms around you. Hope is sad tears flowing making room for joy. Hope is angry words bursting, making room for understanding. Hope is scared words asking for help and finding that help is there. Hope is knowing that you are loved. Hope is knowing that you love others. Hope is holding tight to your mother's hand. Hope is your father's goodnight kiss. Hope is remembering his kisses when he can't be there with you. Hope is finding happiness in simple things. This little girl is blowing bubbles. Hope is daring to do something you've never done before. Hope is remembering that you are not alone. Many others feel just the way you do. Many others care. 
Hope is a candle flame in the darkness. Hope is the clear sky above the gray clouds. Hope is the glistening of snow when the storm has passed. Hope is a heart that is open to the world around you. Hope is knowing that things change and that we can help things change for the better. Hope is always there inside you, waiting to unfold. I hope you have a good week. A dialogue by members of the world community which promotes peace requires risk. The risk includes the possibility of arousing anger and hostility in the expression of strongly held conflicting views. Perhaps an even greater risk is the surprise in receiving new insights that require changing your own perspective. It is possible that you could discover unexplored horizons of meaning and truth in real engagement with another person. You cannot fully foresee what will happen. At the same time, risk must be matched by trust to expose yourself to the analysis and challenge of another person requires trust. Dialogue depends on trust that the other person is also caring, is secure enough in his or her own beliefs to allow for differences, and is open to learning new dimensions of his or her orientation that may be evoked in the dialogue. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. Oh, for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. Oh, for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings and we are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage. Fathers of time, daughters of dust, and the sons of great visions, we're sisters of mercy, brothers of love, lovers of life, and the builders of nations, we're seekers of truth, keepers of faith, makers of peace, and the wisdom of ages, we are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreamings and we are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage, fathers of time, daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy, brothers of love, lovers of life. And the builders of nations, we're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers. We, we are our grandfather's dreamings and we are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. Grandmother's prayers and we are a grand
grandfather's dreamings We are the breath of our ancestors We are the spirit of God For each child that's born A morning star rises and sings to the universe Who we are For each child that's born A morning star rises and sings to the universe Who we are We are meditation this morning was written by Denise Libertov. An awe so quiet, I don't know where, when it began. A gratitude had begun to sing in me. Was there some moment dividing song from no song? What does dewfall begin? When does night fold its arms over our hearts to cherish them? When is daybreak? Join me in a minute of silence for prayer or meditation. Blessed be. I first met Patrick Miller when I was substituting at the school I used to teach at, Travis Middle School. I was walking down the hall and the newer teacher uh, walked up behind me and started visiting. He introduced himself and by the time we got to his classroom, I knew Patrick Miller's students were in very good hands. So it is my pleasure this morning to introduce our speaker. Patrick is a native of Amarillo. He was elected at the age of 25 to a six-year term on the Amarillo College Board of Regents. While serving on the board, Miller collaboratively managed a budget of approximately $67 million and adopted policies which incre increased college accessibility, affordability, and completion. Miller, a first-generation college student, earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in pre-law studies from West Texas A&M University. He decided to forego law school and obtained his teaching certificate instead. He has earned master's degrees in both teaching and in educational leadership, both from WT. During his tenure at Travis, he served on several site-based committees and in 2015-16 was their teacher of the year. After completing four years, he was promoted to serve as Curriculum Assessment Specialist at Whittier Elementary and now is Vice President at Eastridge Elementary. Miller is President of the Amarillo Branch MAACP and a distinguished member of the Omega Delta Phi Theta Chapter Alumni Association. His selfless devotion to the Amarillo community has been displayed through his active membership with the Loft Church, the Panhandle PBS Advisory Council, the Randall County Sheriff's Office Advisory Board, and the United Way of Amarillo and Canyon Governing Board of Directors. As a result of his leadership, Miller received the Influential Community Leadership Award from the Pentecostal Temple and was the recipient of the Community Service Award from the Amarillo branch of the NAACP. In 2019, Miller was recognized with a top 2% educator award from his alma mater, Eladura High School. Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Patrick Miller. I'm the president of the Amarillo Bridge NAACP. I am delighted to be with you this morning. Thank you for uh, providing me with this invitation. I'm certainly appreciative of the work that the Amarillo Unitarian Universalist Church does in our community. And to a greater extent, I'm appreciative of the long-standing commitment and collaborative efforts that exist between the Amarillo Unitarian Universalist Church and 
the nationwide Unitarian Universalist Church. Throughout our history, it seems as though the Unitarian Universalist Church has been on the forefront of ensuring that they were partners with any type of creed, race, social economic status, non-powerful individual or entity, whether it was the abolitionist movement, the temperance movement, women's suffrage movement, or any social justice movement throughout our history, the Unitarian Universalist Church has been there to help support those causes which compel us to do the greater good for humanity. Therefore, I take great pleasure in being here. And I want to begin with a verse from Scripture. Mark chapter 3, verse 25 says, And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. I think we are too often remembering that in terms of what uh, a great American statesman, Abraham Lincoln, once said, but its roots are in the Bible. And we must remember that as Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we all have an ability to work with one another, to learn how to love one another as we serve our Heavenly Father. You see, the Emerald Branch NAACP exists because we work to ensure the political, educational, social, economic equality of rights of all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. We need partners who are committed to ensuring that this work is fulfilled. For 78 years, the Emerald Branch NAACP has existed in this great community. Though we know that times have certainly changed, it appears that we still are fighting some battles that are long overdue in victory. Where we may have first began with ensuring that we certainly have economic rights or the right to simply own property, the right to be employed or to apply for employment anywhere, we are now fighting battles just to ensure there's proper zoning in our community, We're fighting battles to ensure that the students who are awakened bright and early every morning are not forced to sit up on a bus stop long before the bus arrives. You see, the work that we are involved in now is more pressing than ever, but it does not take away from the success that has been made along the way. For over 78 years, the Emerald Branch NAACP has found members of the community, whether they're members of a church or simply residents here in this town who have decided to bend with us to ensure that we're marching toward equity and justice for all. When we needed scholarship opportunities provided to students who lived in lower socioeconomic homes and communities, our city decided to partner with the Emerald Branch NAACP, the Emerald Area Foundation, and other like-minded organizations to ensure that those scholarship opportunities were provided to those who needed it most. When we needed to ensure integration in our school system, the desegregation plan initially adopted by the Emerald Independent School District in 1967 took flight and helped to ensure that students of color had the opportunity to receive that quality public education. And though we know what went wrong in that, the taking away of that neighborhood school or the forced integration to a school that didn't, that was not composed of many members of color. We know that over time, those wrongs have been made right through us all doing our part to ensure that every child who attends a school receives a quality public school education. But that work was not done in isolation. That work took partnership. It took a community. It took churches who decided that we, as the church, we, the body, the bride of Christ, took it upon ourselves to unite. And now, more than ever, we must unite. We know with the murder of Mr. George Floyd, we were all pulled in various directions. But it seemed as if in that moment, we all decided enough was enough. 
would champion the cause greater than ourselves, like we have once before, like we had myriad times before. You see, any time that we march, we march with purpose. We don't just march for exercise. Any time that we lobby, we lobby with intentionality, not just so that our voices are heard. It's not about getting on a microphone or in front of a camera. It's about the work that goes on behind the scenes. It's about the bridging of a community. It's about forming those community partnerships with law enforcement and with civic leaders. It's about ensuring that they know our voices will be heard. You see, ultimately, our vote is our voice. We have to choose to use it wisely. And when we don't, we suffer. When we don't, it's as if we're cowering down to those forces that want to allow us to feel as if we are inferior. We are not. No man or woman is superior to another. We are all here on this earth. We all share this earth. It is our responsibility to love God and love people through our work. Whatever that work is in your personal life, make sure it's reflective of the Savior that is within you. For me, this work is important. It may not look like it used to. We're in a modern technological age with 21st century digital resources available to us. In a time of a pandemic, whether some folks want to still believe we're in or out, we're learning how to do business differently. And we're connecting with scores of people whom we may not have otherwise had the opportunity to collaborate with. You see, whereas before we may have had massive events and massive rallies and seen scores of people attending our functions, now we're choosing to unite people digitally, whether it's ensuring that they have the resources they need to know who the candidates are vying for their vote, or if it's simply putting on a town hall virtual discussion to ensure that people know where we stand and whom we're partnering with to ensure that there is legitimate eff efforts made to ensure criminal justice reform, even in our city. We are doing those things that matter. Your membership or your participation with us has helped us with voter registration, U.S. Census completion, and fundraising support that is good and necessary for the vital outreach of our scholarship efforts throughout our service area. Furthermore, your membership or partnership with the Amarillo Branch NAACP has helped us provide meals to our healthcare workers while contributing to the acquisition of personal protective equipment for our local schools. Moreover, your membership has helped us provide virtual town halls and political forums to educate and inform our entire community, as aforementioned, from criminal justice, to housing, to voting, to education. Even amidst a pandemic, your membership has helped us send students to colleges and universities throughout our nation, while supporting nonprofit organizations such as Martha's Home and the Pride of the Panhandle Golf Club. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Luke chapter 12, verse 48 tells us, to whom much is given, much is required. We are given this life not to live it for ourselves. It is not for vain glory that we exist. It is for God's glory. Let's ensure that we're working together to ensure that we have a community reflective of the love that we embrace and the love that extends to all. May God bless and keep you. Thank you again for this opportunity. At this time in our service, we recognize the joys and concerns of the community. As we do not have any that have been shared at this time, we will light one final candle for the joys and concerns not shared, but still felt deeply in our hearts. Usually at this time in our service, the congregation makes its financial offering. 
If you have made a pledge or would like to make a contribution, you can simply mail it to our office or you can make it online. There is a donate button on our YouTube landing page and on our website, uuamarillo.org. On the home page in the upper right corner, you will find a blue donate button that will take you to a place where you can donate securely through PayPal. If you have made a financial pledge for this year, please keep up your pledge. While we are not meeting in person, some groups are still meeting. Nothing Much Buddhist Group will continue to meet on Mondays at 7.30 using Zoom. Please check their Facebook group for more information. On Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., the Knowledge Seekers Group meets in fellowship at the Fellowship. Masks and social distancing are required. Even though we extinguish this chalice, may the light burn brightly in your hearts during the week. May the fellowship of this hour touch and move our lives until we come again together.